appreciate everyone, the elders, the, the deacons, uh, all the ministers, instrumentalists, and our online audience. May God bless you. I want to welcome you at, for our second day. We started this journey yesterday, and uh, it's my prayer that as we proceed through the week, God is going to speak to you in a deep way about some of the things we are, we are learning. And we are learning so that we can become better. You know, there is a saying that if we knew better, we would do better. So sometimes we don't do better because we just don't know better. And sometimes you don't need even motivation because you actually don't even know what you need to, to do. So even somebody encouraging you and making promises does not help because you don't know what you need to do. So you first need to be guided and to be built. And we are dealing with uh, the topic on stages and seasons in life. You need to understand stages and seasons in life. Today I'm going to finish with the, the stages because it's important for you first of all to understand stages before you understand seasons because there is no need to teach children things that do not belong to, to children. Paul says by now you ought to be teachers of the word but you are still as those who need to partake milk for you have come to be children. You know it's interesting statement. For you have come to need milk. Now who comes to need milk? Think about that statement. Who comes to need milk? Okay? I may answer very simply. A child is born with a natural need for milk. So a child does not come to need milk. The person who comes to need milk is a person who is grown up. And instead of growing up, they are growing down. So now you have come to need milk instead of moving on to solid foods. That is what we are dealing with. And Galatians chapter 4, this is just one of those uh, side scriptures we are going to use. Our main text is not going to be this, but I want to read this. Galatians uh, chapter 4, verses 1. A very interesting uh, scripture. Galatians chapter 1, verses 4. And it says, I'm reading from the, um, the message, not the message, the New Living, New Living Translation, or actually I think it's the King James. I carry the King James today. If you want to teach nicely, learn to teach from the King James. Yeah, it's as close as possible to the original. And it says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, it differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord over all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. A child as long, a, a, an heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Very powerful statement. And he says this child, even though he owns everything, must be placed under tutors until a time appointed by the father. Now let me tell you, this, self, this appointed time here of the father is a self-appointed time. It, de it is determined by your growth and your maturity, how you accept and allow yourself to grow and be mature. Now let's go to our main text. Our main text is Isaiah 3 verses 12, but I just want you to put your finger there and we'll read another scripture, which is first Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 16. Ecclesiastes 10, 16. Ecclesiastes 10, 16. I was hoping these screens are going to be on, but it's okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16. And also make sure that your finger is on uh, Isaiah. So that when I read them, now I, I put the Bible down and then we, we, we go into what God has put for us for today. I'm actually not finding Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 
to uh, chapter 10 verses 16 and I read Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Woe unto you, O land, whose king is a child. So it's possible to have a king who is a child. So when we are talking about childishness here, we are not talking about chronological age. We are talking about characteristics or behavior patterns that could qualify a 60-year-old to be a child. And these are the things we are going to be dealing with. I told you I'm not trying to be rude. I am not the one who wrote the Bible. So I'm just reading and interpreting <laughs> what is there? So if you want to get offended, you get offended at God, not me. Okay? And then let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the major prophets. Isaiah chapter 3. Well, some, of the, some of these scriptures are offensive if you think of them in a carnal way. But you learn the truth. That is, that is there. Isaiah chapter 3 verses 12 and it says as for my people children are their oppressors and women rule over them my people oh my people they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the, uh, the way of thy paths as of my people children are their oppressors and Women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Uh, I know women cannot say amen to that. But you'll get the picture because he's, God has nothing against women in leadership. Uh, I'm not saying women should not lead. I'm not saying if women are evil. But their characteristics, there are wrong characteristics about women that work against them. Not those ones in this church, the ones in those other churches. So I am telling you so that you can evangelize to them and help them, yeah? So you, you people are good. So it says that there are certain characteristics. And yesterday we said, number one, if you want to identify a child, Paul says, when I was a child, I did what? I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. So if you want to understand people and to know who people really are, you don't need even the gift of discernment. You just need to have a good ear and listen to what they say because you can pick what kind of people you are dealing with by what they speak because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you don't really need to discern much to tell a child. You can tell a child by their speech. And so the reason we need to understand these things is because we need to move from where we are to where we need to be. And you, are, you need to understand this, that everyone is a leader in our own capacity. Every human being was created by God to lead and to be led. And there are levels of leadership and all these kind of things. The second thing I want you to know is that God has destined you for greatness and God wants you to excel and to succeed. Say amen. God wants you to move from where you are and he has a great life for you. After all, he says the plans I have for you are, are great plans to give you a great future and an expected end. But then, if we are leaders and we are being led, then we need to answer two questions. Number one, if I am a leader, I need to ask myself, what kind of a leader am I? Am I a childish leader? Because if I am a childish leader, then it means, according to the scriptures, the people I am leading, I am leading them into error. Okay? And then if I am also being led by a leader who is childish, it also means that that leader is misleading me. So I want you to know that you are either leading people or misleading 
people. Or you are either being led properly or you are being misled. Are we together until there? So, this message is going to help you identify where you are. And we will pick a few characteristics. <coughs> so, if you want to know someone, according to Paul, listen to them. Listen to what they say. Because it is very dangerous as an adult if, number two, our understanding is elementary. You understand? It is very bad for an adult to have childish understanding. So if you, as an adult, have childish understanding, you will come to premature or immature decisions because your thinking process is not mature. Okay? So as a grown-up, if your thinking process is immature, your conclusions will also be mature. And I told you when we talk about childishness, we are not talking about age. We are not talking about chronological age. We are just talking about childish character. Childish wisdom can be very dangerous in the mind of an adult. You understand? If you are an adult and you are carrying childish wisdom, you are a terror. And you are a disaster wherever you go. You understand? So what is normal for a child is most dangerous for an adult. You can imagine if you have children, you have a wife, you have a home, and you are thinking is that of a, a child, you're going to have disaster, and things will not work. Just like if you get married and you still are thinking like a single person, you are going to be soon unmarried. Because the, the responsibility and the maturity required in marriage cannot be handled by a person who still has the thinking of a, a single person. So... Childish thinking and childish ways can be dangerous in an adult's mind. And then childish understanding, and this is psychologically proven, childish understanding can dwarf an adult. Childish understanding can dwarf an adult. There is actually a psychological, a medical term for that, and it is called deprivation dwarfism. Deprivation dwarfism <laughs> is a psychological or medical term for children who fail to develop because of the way they were nurtured. They were not brought up well. They were not taken care of well psychologically. So they get stunted in their growth. Either physically, spiritually, emotionally, and all that. Okay? So it's a physical concept used to describe kids who have been physically dwarfed. Because they were not matured properly or nurtured properly. And the Bible says, children oppress my people and women rule over them. We are going to deal with all these things. So if you are under the leadership of a child, I told you you will mislead and if you are under the, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, vice versa, you are going to mislead people. So one of the characteristics of children and this is, these are things you need to understand so that you can be able to move your life forward. One of the characteristics of children is that children love toys. Children love toys. And each one of us have our own toys. You know, I get amused when, when people start comparing their toys. Because even in church, we have people who operate in that realm of toys. You will hear people talking about our church is this big. Our church looks like this. Our church has this kind of equipment. Uh, our pastor drives this kind of car. Uh, our pastor lives in this kind of place. These are toys. These are toys. And most of the nonsense we have between people is that you show me your toys and I'll show me, I will show you my toys. Because that's how kids operate. And people are really not bothered about the content that's inside the chat. It's about all these useless things. <laughs> my pastor. And so all we have done is that our bodies have grown big, our heads have grown big, we have started getting beard, our muscles have increased, but we are little boys and little girls trapped in huge bodies. But our thinkings refused to, to grow. And it is possible to, to find a grown-up, big body, but small, small mind. And these words are not meant to insult. They're actually meant to inspire so that you ask yourself, by the way, because I think I'm a... What is the evidence that I'm a mature or a 
our grown up. And it is not because you have gray hair. If people say <laughs> gray hair is a sign of wisdom, yeah? Sometimes some of the most stupid people have a lot of white hair. Yeah? And some of the wisest people don't have a single white hair on their head. Of course you can't tell that to your elder because it is wrong, but it's just the reality of of life. Of life. So what are the purposes of toys? Because you know people talk about these things. The purposes of toys are to distract children. And so that is why we give children toys to distract them. That is why even during the church service sometimes your phone can become a toy because it is meant to do what? To distract the child. And part of the characteristic of, 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 of children being distracted is that children are always looking for something new to distract them because they easily get bored. <laughs> so you buy a child a toy today, after two, three days, they are bored with that toy and they want an, uh, another toy because the distraction and the mystery about that one has ended. And that you'll find, you, sometimes you'll find in church, you'll find somebody is cracking their head trying to buy a new phone. And the phone they have can serve them properly just the way it is. But why do you want a new phone? Because you're bored with the old phone and you want a new phone. And the only thing you do is WhatsApp, text message, and call in people. There's nothing else you do with your phone for you to have an extended or a great phone. You'll find people wanting to buy new cars. And the car that they have can take them from point A to point B. But why does the person want a new car? They are bored with the car. So Bishop T.D. Jake says this, that the only difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. So children own small toys, but these big boys also own a bit more expensive toys. And I'm speaking to you so that you look at your life and you start asking yourself some serious questions. Am I being entertained by toys? Because if you are not careful also in church, you can become somebody's toys. You know, girls play with small dolls. You'll find them playing with dolls, dressing dolls. And then all of a sudden, now they want life-size dolls. And you'll find both sexes in church becoming the toys of other people. <laughs> I always tell people, if somebody dumps you and comes back, don't accept. Do you know why? Have you ever watched children? A child will play with a certain toy and then get bored with it and dump it somewhere. Then you buy that child another toy and they will play with that toy for two weeks and then they will get bored. And then they will go back to that old toy that they had dumped somewhere and they want it back. And you'll find sometimes some girls getting excited. Jimmy came back. I believe the Lord showed him what he was missing. Jimmy didn't come back to stay. Jimmy got bored of Sophia. And he wants to play with you for a little bit more time before he dumps you permanently. So you see, you have to be wise to know, am I somebody's toy? Really? Because as you grow up, you do not want childish relationships. You do not want childishness around you. Okay? Number two, children have no sense of danger. Children have no sense of danger. I remember when my children were growing up, from Sherry to all the others, Jerry, Mark, and Jerome. I mean, there are times you would find when they are young, they are trying to catch spiders, or they are trying to catch any insect that they find. And you know, sometimes you might think, are these children really brave? No, they are not brave. They are stupid. They are stupid because they do not know the consequences of some spiders. That some spiders have enough venom to take you out or to put you into serious problems. So it's not bravery. It is just childishness. And childishness is shown in stupidity sometimes because they cannot anticipate the danger that is connected to their action. You understand? So if you are not matured or grown up, you will expose yourself to certain kind of dangers. I got amused sometimes of listening to a, 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 a speech about how parents sometimes sit down with their children to watch movies that are rated above the age of the children. 
And you find that sometimes as a parent you are watching a movie that is rated 18 years and above and you have 6, 7, 8 year olds watching with you. And the content of the movie is not meant for these children. And then after some time of continuously exposing them to content that is beyond their age, they start manifesting nonsense and then you come to church and waste the pastor's time with things you should have controlled at home, but because you were, not, not, let me not say immature, there was something wrong, you could not anticipate the danger of showing them content they should not watch before they are mature enough to handle it. You understand? Children cannot <coughs> excuse me, anticipate danger. There was a research that was done and uh, they said about 85% of the people who commit homicide in the U.S., 85%. I think homicide is a crime that leads to death where somebody gets killed. And they said 80% of the people who commit homicide, according to that research, at one point in their life had watched Tom and Jerry. I think I heard pastor speaking about Tom and Jerry on Sunday. <laughs> and they said that while children are watching Tom and Jerry clobber each other, and it looks funny, and it's fun, because I also watched Tom and Jerry, unfortunately. But as they are watching, and you are laughing with them, but then they are understanding something differently. So as they watch those little creatures clobbering each other, hammering the dog, beating the mouse, beating the cat, they are developing a sense of violence in them. They are not sensitive. That's why you'll find kids kicking dogs. And you wonder, why did you kick the dog? Or you'll find a child holding the cat by the tail and throwing it up. And it looks funny at that time. But in a few years, that child will not be clobbering dogs. That child will be clobbering you and your neighbor. And if they don't clobber you and your neighbor, they'll clobber their wife or their husband. But that thing was developed in them from an early stage. So if you cannot anticipate danger and you do not know how to protect your environment, you'll find yourself in trouble. As a Christian, you should also anticipate the danger of you walking carelessly. So as a pastor, I should be very careful how I walk because my walk can cause trouble in the house of God. There are people who lose faith because their leader went wrong and they had put too much faith in him. And you cannot blame them because God expects that the leader should have known better. So you need to be careful so that as you are, are, are if, especially if you have a pulpit ministry and God has allowed you to have an oracle gift or maybe you're in the prison worship, you're, you're a preacher or you're, you're normally seen by the masses, your work should be almost above reproach. Because the way you operate or the way you do things will hinder your work. How would you, if you found me outside there talking nonsense, five minutes before I come here to preach, would you receive the word the same way? No. If you found me misbehaving somewhere in a hotel and I am rude to the waiters and I am rude to the cook or the watchman who opens the gate, and then I come here and lift holy, holy hands. Will you really want to? I once met a prophet of God, a very <laughs> beloved prophet in this country. I'll not mention his name because I'm not for his judge. But at the gas station, the guy was so annoyed. He was abusing the attendants. Really shouting at them and showing them the middle finger. And I'm wondering, <laughs> is this a guy people bow down to? And I'm, I'm not really judging, but from that time, I really, even if he preaches good stuff, that thing, that is why your character should be more powerful than your gift. Because your character will keep you where your gift cannot sustain you. Because gifts are given for free. But character is developed and should be sustained. That is why you should never judge a person by their gift. But by their character, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can speak in tongues as much as you want to. 
you can cry while worshiping but i'm more interested what comes out of your mouth and out of your spirit then that makes me decide so children cannot anticipate danger relationships and families can expose each other to to danger so if you are a, a person who goes to your office and you're flirting with everybody and you're joking around with everybody in the office and you're a married person sometimes you may not anticipate the danger you might put your family in because some fool in the office might think you're in love with them <laughs> and they think you are throwing signals and they misinterpret your signals and now you start a hurricane of problems for your family you know when we were young and we were foolish i remember sometimes uh you know uh, uh during our time i mean the most things you could buy and put in your pocket and want to eat during youth meetings were sweets yeah and i remember there was a time there were these two sweets that had uh, love hearts and uh the way we were brought up by uh, my dad especially and he'd always enforce that he'd say if you if you want to eat something in the presence of others and you do not have anything to share with them don't eat you either control your hunger your appetites or make sure that you share so there was this time in a, a youth meeting I, i really wanted to take a sweet cuz uh, it was during fasting and, and and the mouth was bitter and so without thinking i took this sweet and i gave it to the person who was sitting next to me who happened to be a girl and 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 then she started interpreting that because the sweet was a love heart i was sending love messages to her <laughs> now let me tell you when somebody wants to marry you they will want to marry you in fact i never told any girl in my whole lifetime i want to marry them. i only told one girl and that was lisa there is no girl i hinted somebody may have gotten the wrong signal and i'm 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 telling also you young people don't read signals let somebody tell you if they can't tell you then there is no hope there you understand don't read signals get the real information so you be careful how you carry yourself out so that people do not misinterpret your intentions and your actions you understand so that is how children operate the other thing is that children are selfish children only think about themselves most of the time when you talk to parents you know they'll tell you it's the holiday season and we are tired of this children do you know why because they are needy and in their neediness they are selfish because they don't think about anyone they will finish wood for you they will leave the house in a mess and the only person they are thinking about is one characteristic of children is that they want their blessings now I want a cake now. I want a toy now. I want my man now. I want my woman now. I want my car now. And so even when God tells you wait, a child will start throwing tantrums because they do not know how to wait. And do we have children in the house of God? They're not children. <laughs> They are there. God I will not come to church again until you give me a a man. In fact, I will stop tithing and I am going to cause the kingdom of God to have no peace until you answer. And God tells you bring it. And he tells the angel, we have a fool here who needs to go into the oven so that we can cook that brain a bit so that it can grow up so some affliction is not demonic it is just meant to drive out foolishness i always tell my children there is no prayer to drive out foolishness in fact god never said prophesy to your children foolishness come out he told you take the rod and the rod drives out foolishness not prayer not fasting not counseling the rod will drive out now you think god is not a parent yeah tell your neighbor that affliction sometimes you're suffering is a sign of foolishness 
being driven out. It's just foolishness being driven out. Why is God not answering my prayer? Sometimes God not answering your prayer is answering your prayer. Because he knows you cannot handle what you are asking for. I remember one time uh, we were coming uh, from uh, a fellowship with a friend of mine. And at around White Rhino, uh, when White Rhino was operating, I don't know if it's still operating, but there were many, many beautiful cars there. And we had come from church, and the church where we were, there were not very many people with cars. And so I, I told him, uh, I wish God would pick these cars from these people and give them to the people in church so that the people in church can go to church. And then he told me, if God takes these cars and give them to the people in church, the people in church are the ones now who will be here, and these ones are the ones who will go to church. Because some people, if they got blessed, they'll not come to church. All of a sudden, the parking here is sloping, so the car's handbrake is getting worn out. Yeah, all of a sudden, now the, the, there's no security in that church. Somebody, or the children are going to scratch my car. And so God looks at you and says, this is a cow. Yeah? Let me keep this person in this bond till their brain <laughs> moves up. Children are selfish. I read a small story somewhere about a little child who went into a, a certain restaurant and he wanted ice cream. And so he went to the waitress and asked I, the waitress, how much is an ice cream? And the waitress, you know, just brushing him off said, 75 cents. And uh, the boy asked, is there a smaller ice cream? And, and the waitress said, yes, there is. Uh, what do you want? And the boy said, give me the smaller one. Because uh, he was told the smaller one is 65 cents. And he took his ice cream. And then when the waitress came to clear the table, she was so moved and ashamed because on the plate, the little boy had left 65 cents. But under the saucer, he had put 10 cents for her tip. When he was asking for that price, he was considering something to leave with the waiter. And so he took something less so that he could be a blessing to her. How many of us think like that? How many of us think like that? <laughs> because we are selfish. And selfishness is a sign of childishness. If you are selfish, you will have a miserable life. A miserable life. And if you are selfish, you will rot from the inside because you will be like the Dead Sea, always receiving but never giving out. You're never releasing. We are supposed to be like rivers. We receive and release. Receive and release. But the mark of that children are selfish. So if you live life and you engage with children, you will have a problem. This one, this, this word goes out especially to people who are not yet married. Yeah? If you find yourself dating a child, I will tell you, run for your life. Run for your life. If you are dating a child and you find them within these characteristics, if you are dating a child, run for your life. I hear people say opposite attracts, and it is true, but it is compatibility that keeps partners together. Are we compatible? Do we love the same things? Do we want to go to the same place? I thank God because when he gave me a wife, he, he, he not only gave me somebody I, I enjoy talking to and I love talking to, but somebody we are moving in the same direction. That's why we love doing almost everything together because it's not a burden. But if you get, the Bible says, if you yoke an ass and a what? And a bull, or a, if you yoke an ass and an ox together, they will not be able to plow. Now, none of these animals are evil. Both of them are born again. The ox, the ox is born again, and the ass is born again. The only difference is that they have different priorities in life. The ass likes to play. Have you ever seen a bull somewhere rolling on the dust, playing? You will never see bulls doing that. But you'll see donkeys on the road blowing dust because donkeys love to, to play. But the ox wants to work. So if you are a person who loves to work and you marry somebody who loves to play, you will have problems because you will pull in different directions. 
And that is why maturity comes in here. Because a lot of people, they want to look for a mate who looks nice on the outward. So I find guys normally defining what is your dream girl. One with long hair. A sharp pointed nose. One with, who has a neck. Like the Tower of David overlooking Damascus. Or with hair, like the mountain, the, the goats running down the mountain. Yeah? Those things only exist in movies. If you are that kind of a person and you marry a girl because she's, she's shapely, after you guys have downloaded two or three babies, you will look for the shape and there will be no shape. You understand? That person who once had a flat belly like a snake will probably look like a mutated octopus. And if the reason you married this person was because of their shape, you will be in trouble because of your childishness. Because most children do not care about the content. When you are marrying, you do not marry container. You marry content. And that is why children's toys and children's things are normally wrapped in colorful packages because children do not care anything about content. They are interested in container. And so people who go for container normally end up having trouble because probably your husband is not that tall, dark man. Probably yours is short, fat, and bald. And that's the one who is good for your destiny. But because you're a child here, <laughs> when you get married, you will soon realize marriages are made in heaven, but so is thunder and lightning. <laughs> and if all you had was a good figure to sustain you, you are in trouble. Now in the next eight minutes, I want to speak at least two characteristics about women and this is what these are things that work against women okay it's not really speaking about women but I want us to pick these two characteristics number one many times women are associated with pettiness and quarrels just write that down it's truth, so let's swallow it and take some juice after that. Many times women are associated with pettiness and quarrels, and this works against them. That is why sometimes you'll find that the breakups of a lot of ministries are, are, are of the times have a lot of women involved in the mixing. Because they, they, that, that ability to, to, to be, let, let me just put it this way. I have seen this in many churches, and I know probably, not probably, I know it is here. There are groups of women in church who cannot see eye to eye. There are certain women who do not talk to other women in church for probably no reason. Some of them is because maybe they are smarter than you. Maybe another one, somebody said something about you. Maybe oh, you overheard a woman talking about your wig. And you had them asking whether this wig was one of those that were in Noah's Ark, you know. And that one got you offended. And now you want to leave church because somebody spoke something bad about you, your wig. Or you went and bought a very expensive dress and you overheard somebody talking and saying, this people should leave these clothes to young people. Now when a person puts on a dress and they look like they are going to burst out of it, And these things create enmities in church. You'd be shocked about the things women don't like about each other. <laughs> Pettiness and quarrels. Pettiness and quarrels. And these things create enmity. Useless enmity. And you can do your, 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 your surgery amongst yourselves, especially the women. I know you have a function coming up. Just observe one another. So this person thinks we don't know how to do these things. They think we, we don't have Google or YouTube at home. They're coming to teach us nonsense like this. 
instead of enjoying the moment, you hear people talking nonsense. Let me not go too much into that because I don't want also enemies. I want to be, to be your friend. <laughs> Number two, women have an inability to let things go. Women have an, a very difficult ability in letting people go. Grudges are not easily resolved. You'll find a woman struggling with issues that are 20 years old because they don't know how to let go. That is why sometimes even when, when, when you find a, a girls dumped, you'll find a girl, they are waiting five years later. Jimmy is coming back. It has been 10 years and Jimmy has 14 children. But in her mind, Jimmy is coming back. He must be thinking about, Jimmy has enough problems. 14 children and a wife. I doubt he has space for another demon, you know. Not really, de <laughs> not demon, more problems. 14 children and a wife are more than enough. So we need to learn that sometimes that there are people who hurt us in the past but you should let them go. You know the good thing with men, you might find me arguing with pastor or I may argue with uh, uh, David there. And after 10 minutes, we are talking together later because we don't keep those things in our heart. And a woman will ask you, how can you talk to him after what he did? And you're wondering, what did he do? You'll find women who don't go to a certain hotel because they were mistreated by a waiter. And you wonder, did you go there to eat the waiter? I mean, I went there to eat food, so next time I just hope maybe I'm served by a, a better waiter, or maybe the waiter will be in their right mind. There are people I refuse to be going to hotels with because it's just drama and an embarrassment. Oh, the cup is, has fingerprints, it is dirty. Oh, the spoon has stains and it is smelling. This food looks like it has a, why didn't you stay at home and eat? And I'm not saying you have to accept substandard stuff, but do you know there are people who you hang around, they're just annoying all the time. Because of pettiness. And then they cannot let things go. We have a saying that do not be so mean to your enemies because your enemies can become your friend in the future. And do not also share all your secrets with your friend because your friend can become your enemy. There is a story about a certain queen servants who had uh, uh, wanted to poison her. And instead of the queen having this person executed, the queen forgave this woman and she became the queen's most loyal aid. Because sometimes a person you are carrying a grudge or an offense against holds the key to your destiny. That person you don't want to speak to right now is the one who is holding the key that will usher you into your next season. But you need to let go of that grudge. You need to let go of that grudge. People who hurt you in the past does not necessarily mean they'll hurt you in the future. So some people had hold grudges in a very terrible way. And the worst characteristic of women, and this one you should be very aware of, is jealousy. Jealousy. The Bible says there is nothing as bad or as wrath as a, the wrath of a woman scorned or as a, of a jealous woman. And by the way, when I say characteristics, I'm saying that these characteristics are also found in You understand? So jealousy is a dream killer. Have you, ever, have you ever seen people who talk about other people's things and they don't have their own things? Have you ever heard people who make fun of people who, who, who buy pro books? And you don't have a pro You are making fun of somebody and you don't have a pro box. You don't even have a bicycle or a tricycle for that matter. And you're making fun of somebody else's car. Or you're making fun of somebody else's church and you don't have a, a church. 
Or you're making fun of somebody's business and you don't have a, a business. And most of the time, these people are not just talking. It is just jealousy. Jealousy. And so you come to church and, 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 and you're dressed nicely and you'll see another woman. Mm. She thinks she looks nice in that dress and she doesn't know she looks like a mutated octopus, you know. And you think somebody is talking sense, but they're just being jealous. Or when you buy a, an expensive car, and then you'll hear people say, how can you buy an expensive car like this and you don't have a, a plot? Who told you I want a plot? And somebody may sound like they're intelligent, but it's just jealousy. Or you'll find somebody in church. People in church are normally jealous of each other. One person sings better than the other. And then you fi start finding people becoming jealous. Or somebody is placed in a position of leadership that you could not handle. And all of a sudden now you become jealous. Yet you cannot do it. And so why should you, why should you be jealous as a man or a woman of another person? Jealousy normally is bathed in ignorance. And here is how we conclude. The reason you find yourself jealous about somebody else is because you think somebody else has gotten your blessing. I know there are these teachings about somebody has stolen your nyota or whatever. Nobody can steal. Because when God created the earth, and I'm telling you apart from people who are still dealing with stuff from the past that is holding them back, when it really comes to provision and the things of God, when God created man, he put him on earth on the sixth day. Do you know why he put him on the sixth day? He made sure he had created everything. Provision was available for man. And then God put man. Have you ever asked yourself, why did he put gold and diamond in the rivers and there was no supermarket? For two people. <laughs> what were two people going to do with gold? God was showing he's a God of abundance and opulence. There was no place to spend that money, but he put the gold there to show that there is provision for everyone. So when somebody gets blessed, they were not blessed with your blessing. Yours is waiting for you to grow up. So sometimes the reason you don't have it is because you're still a, a child and you have been placed under a tutor. So nobody is driving your car. Don't go in town touching people's cars. It's not yours. Ikaril kuayangu. This was my blessing. And you go around it like a witch seven times. Zaga zagarin. Maganda. But you'll maganda until you koganda because it can't come to you. Because it doesn't belong. It's somebody else's. You grow up and then when you give us the kingdom of God, what will happen? And his righteousness. These things shall be added to you. Just look at somebody and just tell them, grow up. Yeah, grow up. Tell them, you do not need more anointing. Come on, preach to them. Tell them, you do not need more anointing. You do not need more revelation. All the notes you have are more than enough. You just need to grow up. So that you are removed under a tutor. And you walk into your place of blessing. Amen. I want you to just stand up. And pray for your head. It's just the head. You know, the Bible says the whole head is sick. So everything else is out of order. So just put your hands on your head and say, God, give me a head that works. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I want you to get to your pocket and... Uh, Let's prepare our offering. I told you yesterday, be, be planning in advance. You can even give before you come. And our online audience, I know we have the number there. So into the grace that is going on here. I believe God is blessing and ministering to you. And if he's speaking to you, also share. Share the message on your timeline. When you go home, you may not preach, but you can take that message, share it on your timeline, and let it go so that the word of God may reach as many people 